All right, guys, I have never done this before, but we are going to be reacting to this video released by Exile, which is a 45% win rate champion is getting nerfed on patch 9.9. Uh, if you guys don't know Exile, you should definitely check him out. He makes really quality videos, as you can tell by the fact that... Wait, 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 where is it? He makes like, you know, doesn't make that many videos. When he does, they're bangers. So check him out. I'll leave a link in the description. But other than that, let's get right into it. He's talking about Akali, how, you know, 45% win rate champion is getting nerfed in 9.9. .9. So let's just go right into it. Right now it's just a cinematic, so I'm just going to skip through this. Akali's balance lore shen does teach balance in all things it appears that akali's balance has been a problem ever since she has been reworked she's literally been changed more patches than she hasn't since she's been reworked she's a huge problem in my most recent video i spoke about reddit's favorite champion to talk about and discuss which is riven the main reason being that her win rate is very high for how hard she is supposed to be to play despite her win rate being very high and frustration from players riot doesn't seem to want to nerf her that being said, there is another carry champion who is not named Riven that will be receiving nerfs on patch 9.9. .9. And that's very interesting too because everyone is crying for uh, Riven re uh, changes and she actually just got announced that she's going to get reworked. Um, I'll leave a link to that video in the description. But yeah, everyone has been complaining Riven nerfs, Riven nerfs for months now when she has a 53% win rate in solo queue. Akali has a 45% and Nine. you know, that champion anyways, just wanted to throw that out there. Akali. Akali is definitely a difficult champion, and a lot of the time people just do not know how to play her to her full potential, don't know what runes to take, and don't exactly know where her limits and potential lies. Really quick, I want to just elaborate on what he said. This is the biggest part about why Akali has a 45% win rate. She is undoubtedly one of the strongest champions in League of Legends. You can dislike me for it, but it's not going to change the fact that it's true. Pro players are picking and first picking and banning it, so... Do you really think that you're right because you couldn't do well in Akali after two games? Or that the professional players with coaches are right? Anyways, just wanted to throw that out there because I think it's really important to note that just because she has a low win rate in solo queue doesn't mean she's not extremely strong. Look at this screenshot. This is from Showmaker of Damwon Gaming, who is rank 3 on the Korean ladder. When taking a look at his Akali builds and runes, you know what I learned from looking at this picture? Absolutely nothing. All <laughs> I learned is that if you're good enough, you can take whatever you want, apparently. Yep. Jokes aside, despite True. having several options to take for rune pages right now, it appears that Akali is definitely in a good spot and is very powerful at the highest level, despite the fact that her win rate is terrible. Today, let's investigate why this is happening. So let's see, two hard to play carry champions who mostly play top lane, although Akali is also good mid, both of them high skill cap, good at high elo, Akali is quite a bit more common in competitive play, but Riven definitely isn't absent from pro games. One of them in solo queue has a win rate that looks like this, and the other one has a win rate that looks like this. Mm -hmm. And this one is the one that's getting nerfed. It's pretty funny, actually. Most of the time, solo queue and competitive play are entirely different experiences and different games. Truthfully, it's not just because they are all challenger. Although exactly. them being disgustingly good at the game is a massive reason why certain champions will be played, there are many other factors. One of them being the fact that there is zero ping, no latency whatsoever. While this may come as a shock, this matters a lot too. There a lot is uh, maybe not so accurate. It definitely matters, but the fact that there they're are challenger and extremely good at League is the biggest factor. Champions in pro play that feel great to play and hard to play against because of this. Before Riot made the combo essentially impossible to miss, playing Alistar for your headbutt pulverize on zero ping also pretty much guaranteed it would work. Not True. just because they were good, which again is part of it, but also because in solo queue, players with 100 plus ping back then could almost never do it. It was just too hard to time correctly. Another good example is Syndra. For years of Syndra being a B or A tier mid laner for solo queue, I love those one shots. Oh, this, oh, this clip is so funny. No matter how good your ADC mechanics are on zero ping and a full team of players that have communications the entire game, her ultimate <laughs> cannot miss you. It is guaranteed damage. It may sound silly, Outplayed. but ease of execution at the highest possible level of play matters more than ever. And it's also why certain champions such as Camille Gallio were so strong for a long time. The best players in the world cannot outplay a Camille plus Galio combo. 
Because of these factors, even a high elo solo queue like Korean Challenger may still have different metas and picks that are popular from competitive play. It's not even the fault of the players who are Challenger, but the system itself. 10 people queuing up alone with no comms, with latency, in an environment of autofills and toxicity is an entirely different game than the ones that are played on stage in front of a crowd. That's very true. As for Akali, she is seen quite okay. commonly at the competitive level. Ever since her rework, she has been the go-to and staple assassin for both top lane and mid lane at this level of play. And even though she did receive some changes and nerfs to her shroud, she is still tearing it. There was one patch where she got huge nerfs. I think it was 9.3, where she wasn't pick or ban in solo queue or in competitive play. And I think she was still picked. It up. When it comes to solo queue, it appears from the outside looking in that tearing it up might be the worst way to describe what she is doing. Now, let's be fair for a second. Don't get too caught up in win rates exactly as they are. Win rates do not always tell you the full story. The win rate of a champion in general can be that way for several reasons and won't always be 100% impacted by how powerful that champion is. For example, let's take a look at Kai'Sa. Kai'Sa has had a very bad win rate for quite a while in solo queue, but has never been truly as bad as it suggests. The problem is that her build path is very critical to her success, and many players might mess this up. First time Kai'Sa players or inexperienced ones, heck even auto-filled ADCs, are constantly hmm. messing up whether they are supposed to take fleet footwork and storm razor, or press the attack and crit. Then are you supposed to be building AP? Is that even good anymore? What the heck is going very on true. with Rageblade? Do I go Gunblade? What about Zhonya's? Yeah, but if I go Storm Razor and Shiv, what happens? Holy moly, people are clueless. <laughs> the cool thing about Akali's though is you can literally build anything other than mana and you'll do well. <laughs> As for Akali's win rate, I do like to add a small buff to it, as I know that she is very hard to play and unforgiving for lower elo brackets and newer players. I would argue that without a doubt, she is one of the least forgiving champions in the game. You really do need to know how to use all of her abilities, including her passive and item actives like Hextech, Gunblade, and Zhonya's very well to make the champion work. It's kind of like the champion isn't a champion unless you've mastered her, which isn't really bad at Kali player's fault. Uh, hold on. One thing I want to talk about. Elo brackets and newer players. I would argue that without a doubt, she is one of the least forgiving champions in the game. You really do need to know how to use all of her abilities, including her passive and item actives like Hextech, Gunblade, and Zhonya's very well okay. to make the champion work. That's true. I thought he was saying that you need to know how to use Zhonya's and Gunblade specifically well, because that's definitely like the smallest part of it. It's kind of like the champion isn't a champion unless you've mastered her, which isn't really bad at Kali player's so fault. True. It just takes practice. That be she is literally garbage until things just like... It just pops in your head and you understand how you're supposed to weave in and out, when to use your shroud. It becomes everything becomes natural with this champion. But before it is, God, she's so bad. Like I remember playing her for the first time at Riot, and I was like, Oh, okay, yeah, this champion, you know, she's okay, but um what am I doing here? Uh but now obviously I'm literally in love with this champion because she's so much fun once you're good with her. Being said, the question becomes, at what point do you look at this number and say to yourself, sure, the win rate is bad and she's hard to play, but aren't some of these champions hard too? How come their numbers are all better than hers? Every single one is better, yet she is the champion that is getting nerfed. Akali's harder. Riot has tried to take the philosophy that the game should be fun and fair for everyone in some ways, and if you don't think so, then take a look at the patch notes recently. Riot has put a good amount of effort pretty recently into buffing, changing, and trying to balance game modes like Earth and ARAM, appealing to the most casual players possible. Mm -hmm. They have been doing what they can to try to make the majority of players happy while also trying to keep the integrity of the professional scene. I want a really quick note on this. He's right. The true stealth shroud is just so annoying. People hate it so much. It's the same reason why they're completely changing Ribbon and Vayne uh, and Master E. It's because their community reworks or community changes because people simply just can't deal with it or they don't want to. They're crying so much. So many people are crying about it that they're cha they're just forced into changing uh, or nerfing rather for a Kali situation. So I think that's like the gist of why the title says, a, why is a 45% champion getting nerfed on 9.9? .9? I praise Riot for trying this to some extent, and I won't act as if this is an easy task either. But I do think for Akali, a lot of players are just not very good at her, which does bog down her win rate by quite a bit. Take a look at this clip. How many Akalis do you know that you've played against, seen on your team, or seen in your games that know how to abuse even her early laning phase, such as her level 1, this well with her passive? All right, now I'm gonna cry, Mr. Critical right here. Let's see this.
How many Akalis do you know that delay the use of their E to wait for their energy to be able to use a Q? Damn it. This is the same thing that happens when I watch like uh, the LCS play Akali. I'm just like, this is obvious. How many Akalis can smoothly transition their leads into mid and late game carry performances when it comes to team fights? Being a bit too yeah, to me, these places awesome. look so easy. Yeah, to get I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm done being, I'm done being cocky. Alright, Ian, auto Q, boom. Auto Q. He didn't even play that play right. <laughs> he could have, hold on. I'm sorry, we're going critical mode again. Alright. Pretty sure he's R2. He didn't need to R2 there. He could have... Auto queued the Vic Victor, backed out, gotten his passive again, and then potentially ran up and auto queued again, and then R2 the Malzahari would have another kill there. I guess it's safer to just get the free kill. I think that this Reddit post itself actually helps me wrap up my thoughts into this video. Akali right now is more like a bruiser, and so is versatile with her build and rune options. She is unintuitive in some ways and horrendous for lower level players. The general player base simply cannot play her, and she is too hard to play until you have 50 games or more. The pros can dominate and abuse her to her full potential, while others can't even carry their silver games. One thing that intrigues True. me a lot recently is her tanky and AD build. I've been playing a bit of this myself, and I think that the AD lifesteal and sustain Akali build is pretty slick. You also become a full drain tanky bruiser that gets to 1v5 a fight with ease. You heal like crazy, do mixed damage, and have wave clear with strong auto attacks and Tiamat. It is with this build that is mentioned by the Reddit post is that she has an assassin-like kit, but when played like a bruiser, this feels even more unfair because you are- Yeah, essentially, the only bad thing about this Akali is that you don't have uh, ranged autos. You have wave clear. Tankiness, sustain, hyper damage, heal, or oh, I already said heal, uh, mobility, stun. <laughs> We're given bruiser yeah. tanky There's nothing like that bad about AD Akali, and it except for you're playing AD Akali. Against. You know what? I feel like I've heard of this before, but where? Where could I have seen something like that before? Oh, really? Oh, Tank Echo, right. But imbalance this one, 1v2, can Dashran get out? He's gonna keep moving in, but Haunts is able to take it. Haunter is playing this Echo so well, and they're not done yet. All right. things said, I think that the nerves themselves seem fair for patch 9.9. It feels like this is directed more towards the top lane, where she can feel a bit stronger than in mid lane. In mid lane, most of what she needs to do is burst people and then one-shot them, whereas in top lane, she acts more like a sustained fighter. I do feel that Riot should look at Akali in the future. Ah, uh, maybe a little bit. Uh, I think that a Shroud being nerfed affects both lanes, but because she's played more top lane, the makes that... She's been nerfed more top. I don't know. I don't know about Once that. Again, because truth be told, maybe she Disagree. is a broken and unfair champion. But what is so interesting about Akali is just how different the discrepancy is between the good ones and the bad ones. And maybe Riot should consider their design philosophy in the future. Well, hold on. You can't compare a champion as difficult as Akali as a champion like Nunu. Really, Nunu doesn't have much to him. Like, if you... like. Count the amount of combos you can do with Nunu versus Akali and like how consistently you have to put them off. Akali has these crazy low cooldowns. They're consistently doing all these crazy combos. And they're also so, so, so situational. This is like uncomparable. I don't Maybe think. Maybe Riot should consider their design philosophy in the future. I think if that's their a intention is to have a champion right that has a massive learning curve such as Akali, then maybe don't even try to buff her for low elos at all. Maybe don't even design a champion for low elos, or maybe counteract it by trying to make more champions that are easy. They've said time and time again the reason they don't want to change Garen is because he is a perfect entry level champion. Clearly, Akali is the opposite of that. Whether mm -hmm. she's only good in high elo, by the one tricks, or in competitive. It's so funny. Just 
pure coincidence, like one of my absolute best friends, the Glacier, is uh, Garen One Trick. It makes YouTube videos. You should check him out too. But just funny that he plays Garen and I play Kali. Complete play. opposite. Kali will be relevant for quite a while because at the end of the day, she is definitely a fun, exciting, and flashy champion that we all love to hate and hate to love. All right, guys. Very well put together video by uh, Exile. I think there were a few small things that he um, may have like used to like make the video more interesting, but I don't know. This one I specifically disagree with, but other than that, honestly, really well done on the on the research and everything he said is pretty much all accurate. So I'll leave a link to his just uh, his channel, and you guys, you guys, you guys have a good day now. I give you permission to have a good day. That was just though, guys. Thanks for watching. Please be sure to leave a like, subscribe if you're new to the channel, and have a good day. Peace out.